When you hear the name California and close your eyes, what do you see? Do you see Hollywood? Do you see Disneyland? Or do you see the Golden Gate Bridge and towering redwood trees and majestic mountains? Yes, California is all those things and much, much more. So let's take a look at California, its history, its economy, its geography, and its many, many people. Welcome to the Golden State, the 31st star on the flag of the United States of America. Geography. California is a land of great physical contrasts. From its many towering mountain ranges, to dense forests, to the lush Central Valley, to the coast along the Pacific Ocean, to the deserts in the south. The state runs for more than 800 miles from the northwest border with Oregon to the southeast border with Arizona. Its varied coastline twists and turns for over 1,200 miles. There are beautiful sandy beaches, sheltered bays, harbors where boats and ships anchor, and spectacular sites where the mountains meet the shore. In the central part of the state, bounded by the coastal ranges on the west and the Sierra Nevada mountains on the east, is the Central Valley, a rich, fertile agricultural region that stretches for more than 400 miles. The Sierra Nevadas contain the highest peak in the lower 48 states, Mount Whitney. It soars to over 14,490 feet. The geography of California is so diverse that less than 100 miles away is the lowest point in North America, Death Valley. It sits 282 feet below sea level in the Mojave Desert. Death Valley is also the hottest and driest spot in the country. The San Andreas Fault runs through the state and is responsible for many earthquakes. The most famous and devastating earthquake struck San Francisco in 1906. It caused massive fires and destruction. About 700 people died and the central business district was destroyed. With geography as varied as mountains, deserts, forests, valleys and coastal regions, you can find every type of climate in California. It can be snowing in one part of the state while it is sunny beach weather not far away. It is safe to say that every kind of climate, landform, vegetation, and animal life that can be found anywhere in the United States can be found in California. The Economy California has one of the largest economies in the world. Geography plays a big part in California's economic strength. The state is rich in natural resources, petroleum and other minerals found underground, vast forests for making paper and other products, oceans, rivers, and lakes for fishing, and fertile soil and climate that make California farms the most productive in the country. Lettuce, peaches, pears, and many other fruits and vegetables, including grapes, are grown on California farms. Four-fifths of American wine comes from California wineries. California's geography also plays a part in another booming industry. Tourism. More than one-fourth of the state's land is preserved as parks, seashores, and wildlife refuges. National parks like Yosemite and Redwoods and hundreds of state parks like Año Nuevo celebrate California's natural beauty. It is estimated that 50 million people each year visit the state's coastline, while millions of others flock to theme parks like Disneyland and SeaWorld. It isn't natural wonders, but man-made wonders that dominate two other California economic strongholds, entertainment and technology. Los Angeles and Hollywood in Southern California are known the world over as the heart of the American movie and television industries, while Silicon Valley in Northern California, the world's high technology center. These and other industries, such as manufacturing and aerospace, contribute to California's strong and diverse economy and life. Early California History 
The first people to live in California were Siberian hunters who crossed the Bering Strait about 10,000 years ago during the last ice age. For thousands of years, their descendants lived and thrived here. The first Europeans came to California in 1542, when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo led a small expedition that explored the coast around San Diego and Monterey Bays. By this time, California was part of the Spanish colony of Mexico, but the Spanish weren't much interested in settling the territory they called Alta California, and they largely left the land and the nearly 300,000 native people alone. That all changed in 1769, when the Spanish decided it was time to settle these lands. To accomplish that, they built a system of missions and military forts called Presidios. The Presidio in San Francisco still stands. The missions were overseen by Father Junipero Serra, who established the first one at San Diego. By 1823, there were 21 missions reaching all the way to San Francisco. The purpose of the missions was to convert the native population to Christianity and build a strong Spanish colony. But the harsh treatment and living conditions they endured and their exposure to European diseases had devastating effects. Within 65 years, the native population had been cut in half. In 1820, Mexico won independence from Spain and change eventually came to Alta California. Land that had been previously owned by the church or controlled by the Spanish governors was given to Californios, prominent Spanish-speaking families from Mexico and Spain who operated ranchos, vast cattle ranges. And American settlers, trappers, and hunters became more interested in the former Spanish colony. By 1845, there were about 6,000 Californios and 2,000 Americans in the territory. Mexico had so little control that the Californios threw out the newly appointed Mexican governor and named their own replacement. Many thought that California would soon declare its independence. California and the U.S. By 1845, Americans believed that the United States was meant to stretch across the continent from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. That year, a newspaper editor named John O'Sullivan gave that idea a name, Manifest Destiny. Two obstacles stood in the way of accomplishing this goal, Great Britain in the North and Mexico in the South. President James K. Polk worked out a treaty with Great Britain and the northern border between the Oregon Territory and Canada was settled peacefully. In 1836, Texas declared its independence from Mexico. In 1845, the Republic of Texas joined the Union as the country's 28th state. But Mexico still considered Texas to be its land. By May 1846, the United States and Mexico were at war. The next month, a small band of rebels, aided by explorer John C. Fremont, started what became known as the Bear Flag Revolt. They ousted the Mexican commander in Sonoma and raised the bear flag, proclaiming the independent Republic of California. In July, United States Naval Forces under Captain Robert Stockton captured Los Angeles. Then General Stephen Kearney, who had been sent west by President Polk, arrived in California. Kearney's troops joined with Fremont's band of rebels, and within weeks, the Americans controlled all of California. The Mexican War ended in 1848 with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. For a payment of $15 million and another payment to settle claims, the boundary between Texas and Mexico was settled at the Rio Grande, and a vast region known as the Mexican Cession was given to the United States. Part of that region was California. America had fulfilled its destiny. The country now went from sea to shining sea. the Gold Rush. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo that ceded California to the United States was signed in February of 1848. A month earlier, there had been a startling discovery in the Sacramento Valley. Gold. The land was owned by John Sutter, 
a Swiss immigrant who had been granted land by the Mexican governor of California in 1839. Sutter's employee, a carpenter named James Marshall, discovered the gold while building a sawmill on the American River. Sutter and Marshall tried to keep the gold discovery a secret, but word got out, and it spread like wildfire. Sutter's land was overrun with people from everywhere. Soon gold was found in other streams. The gold rush was on. Within a year, thousands and thousands of 49ers flooded into California. By 1852, the number reached about 250,000. Mining camps sprang up everywhere, and as more and more people came, the camps developed into towns. Some lucky 49ers struck it rich, but most toiled in cold, icy streams without food in dangerous mining camps. But that didn't stop them from coming. The population of San Francisco went from about 400 in 1845 to 35,000 in 1850. That year, California became a state, the 31st state in the Union. By 1852, the gold rush was over, but the idea of California as a place of opportunity and where the impossible was possible had been set. Statehood. The gold rush of 1849 brought people from all over the world to California. Two thirds of the miners were Americans, mostly white males, but there were also Native Americans, free and enslaved African Americans, and foreigners from Mexico, South America, Europe, and China. By the time the gold rush ended, one out of every 10 immigrants was Chinese. So many moved to San Francisco that their neighborhood became known as Chinatown as it is today. The Chinese were hard workers who would take low wages and in time many Americans came to resent them. The Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 suspended immigration from China. It was an act of discrimination that was not reversed until 1943. Inventions and discoveries continued to lead to the growth of California over the years. In 1869, the first transcontinental railroad was opened, soon followed by the Southern Pacific Railroad. Now California was connected directly to the rest of the country, bringing even more people into the state. The development of irrigated farming opened up new lands. That coupled with the railroads allowed crops to be shipped to eastern markets. In 1892, oil was discovered in Southern California. Then came the automobile. In 1910, electric railways spurred the development of suburbs. The following year, a movie studio opened in Los Angeles. It was just the beginning. These and other opportunities brought people to California. Some were not so fortunate. In the 1930s, destitute people from the Dust Bowl in the Great Plains came to Central California looking for work on farms. While the 1930s and the Great Depression were a time of economic hardship, they were also times of enormous public works projects like the building of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. In 1941, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor, America entered the Second World War. People from all over the country came west to work in California's many defense factories. World War II also brought a sad chapter to California's history. Japanese Americans throughout the state were forced to move from their homes into internment camps for the duration of the war. In 1988, the United States Congress voted to give grants to those who had been interned. When the war was over, many of the people who had moved to California decided to stay. This created a building boom and a thriving economy. California developed an extensive system of state highways and later interstate highways connecting the rural and suburban areas to its many cities like Los Angeles, San Diego, San Jose, and San Francisco. Innovation and invention continued to contribute to California life into the 21st century as Silicon Valley became the world center of high technology. Today, California has a diverse population and economy that reflects its rich history. And, as in the past, people continue to come to California seeking its beauty, its climate, and its sense of opportunity. California's government. 
Sacramento became the capital of California in 1854. Like the federal government in Washington, D.C., the state government is made up of three branches, the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. The legislative branch consists of the Senate with 40 members who serve four-year terms and the Assembly with 80 members serving two-year terms. Legislators elected after June 2012 can only serve a total of 12 years. The state's chief executive is the governor. The governor can serve a maximum of two four-year terms. The judicial branch of the state government is headed by the state Supreme Court. The state constitution was adopted in 1879, but significant changes were made in 1911 under Governor Hiram Johnson. These changes gave a great deal of control of the state government to the people through the initiative, the referendum, and the recall. These measures allow citizens of California to start their own campaigns for laws and bring them to a vote without waiting for the legislature to act. And the people are also empowered to draw up petitions to recall or remove from office elected officials before their terms have expired. Hiram Johnson served as governor from 1911 to 1917, and then as a United States Senator. He was also the Progressive Party candidate for vice president when he ran with Theodore Roosevelt in 1912. They lost that election to Woodrow Wilson. Another California governor also ran for vice president. In 1948, Earl Warren was on the Republican ticket with Thomas E. Dewey. Although he lost that election, Warren went to serve as the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court from 1953 to 1969. Under his direction, the court made some of its most important decisions, including Brown versus the Board of Education, which ended segregation in the nation's schools. One California governor, Ronald Reagan, did reach the White House. In 1980, he became the nation's 40th president. One of the most popular presidents of the 20th century, he is perhaps best remembered for his speech in 1989 calling for the Soviet Union to tear down the Berlin Wall. California Fun Facts Many people believe the name California comes from a Spanish book written about 1510, La Serga de Esplandian, which describes an imaginary island paradise. In fact, early explorers thought they had found an island when they landed on the peninsula now called Baja California. As they moved north to what is now the state of California, they realized that the land was part of North America, so they named this territory Alta, or Upper California. California has many state symbols. The state bird is the California Valley Quail. These plum birds travel in packs of almost 200 in winter and fall, but break into pairs in the spring. The official state tree is the California redwood. The name really refers to two different kinds of trees, the coast redwood and the giant sequoia. The coast redwood is the tallest tree in the world. The giant sequoia, the most massive with trunks that reach 30 feet in diameter, the General Sherman tree in Sequoia National Park is believed to be the largest tree on Earth. The Golden Poppy is the state's official flower. It can be found growing wild throughout the state and was widely used by Native people as a source of oil. It is very fitting that the Golden Poppy should be the state flower because gold has played such an important role in California's history. In 1968, California adopted as its nickname the Golden State. The state flag is called the Bear Flag. A flag with a bear was first raised in Sonoma during the Bear Flag Revolt in 1846. The star and the bear on the original flag were drawn from blackberry juice. The state's official flag was designed by William Todd. His aunt, Mary Todd Lincoln, was the wife of President Abraham Lincoln. The grizzly bear on the flag represents strength. The single star stands for independence. The red background is a sign of courage, and the white stands for purity. The grizzly bear is also the official state animal. 
The Great Seal of the State of California also has many symbols, including the grizzly bear. You can also see 31 stars. California joined the Union as the 31st state. Grapes to show California's rich agriculture. A miner, symbol of the state's many natural resources. The Sierra Nevada Mountains and the Sacramento River busy with commercial traffic. Overlooking all of this is Minerva, the Roman goddess of wisdom. At the top is the state motto, the Greek word Eureka, which means, I have found it. This, in all probability, refers to the discovery of gold in 1849. The gold rush gave birth in a way to another phenomenon. In 1850, a foreign-born tailor came to San Francisco with the hope of making tents from canvas. When he couldn't sell tents, he decided to use the canvas to make pants for the miners. The pants were very sturdy and became very popular. Soon, he changed the material from canvas to a blue denim called jeans in French and added copper rivets at the seams to make them even more durable. His name was Levi Strauss, and today his jeans, still called Levi's, are an enduring symbol of America throughout the world. Another popular California symbol takes its name from the gold rush, the San Francisco 49ers, one of the state's many sports teams. Other popular teams in California are the Los Angeles Lakers, the San Diego Padres, and the San Jose Sharks. Two California teams, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants, made history when they became the first Major League Baseball teams to move west of the Mississippi River. Here are some other fun facts about California. California has the largest population of any state in the United States. Therefore, it has the most representatives in Congress. Did you know that three presidents lived in California? Herbert Hoover, Richard Nixon, and Ronald Reagan. Herbert Hoover was one of the first students to enroll at Stanford University in 1891 and he lived in Palo Alto for a short time after he left the White House in 1933. Richard Nixon was the only native Californian. He was born in Yorba Linda and served in Congress from 1945 to 1953 when he became vice president. Nixon was elected president in 1968 and 1972, but resigned from office in 1974. Ronald Reagan served as governor of California from 1967 to 1971. He was elected president in 1980 and 1984. The Nixon and Reagan Presidential Libraries are among the many historical sites you can find throughout California. Now you know a lot about California, its symbols, its history, its natural beauty, and its culture. But the best thing about California is its people. People who are proud to be from the Golden State. The 31st star on the flag of the United States of America. <laughs> like us. Subscribe. Ring the bell. Comment, Comment below. below.